Good morning, Coronacation. It is Saturday, which means we're doing stuff a little different. But first, Corey, I have a surprise for all you guys. I chopped my beard off. I look a little different, don't I? So today, you know, one of the reasons that I chopped my beard off is because you got this coronavirus thing going around and I tried to put on a mask the other day at the hospital and we had to take Liam to the hospital for a little appendicitis scare. And uh, the mask, it couldn't fit my face. And so I was like, man, I need a mask that can fit my face. And so then I started thinking, I was like, man, should I, should I shave my beard? Should I not? Should I trim it up? And um, so, and I just kind of wanted to change. So I decided to, Trim it up, Corey. It's gone, Coronacation. What do you think? Does it look better or does it look worse? Do I look better with a beard or better with, I guess, double thumbs up, but better without a beard? And it doesn't really matter because I'm probably going to grow another one. But anyway, so that led me to think, what if we could get somebody to teach us how to make a mask? And so... That is what we're going to learn today. We have a special guest who is going to teach us how to make a mask. Um, but Corey, first, I want to see how you're doing this morning. Can can you tell us how you're doing? Um, I'm on. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna throw you up in the air. Here you go. Oh, Andrew, careful. Hey, um, let's see. Now I did get a haircut too, but mine was up here and down here. Um, home haircuts, always the best. My wife's been doing mine forever, so I don't have to worry about the risk. Maybe you have, though, if you're getting a haircut at home. All right, so let's see. Today, Miss Amy is going to be teaching us about making a mask. Um, we're supposed to be wearing them when we go out now, and she thought it would be an easy task for you to do. It might require you to hit pause a couple of times, maybe rewind a couple of times, but I actually think that you could do this. She makes it really easy, gives you step by step, so let's just turn things over to her. That's today's challenge. See if you can make a mask. Why don't you uh, share with us if you were successful? We would love to see your creations. Good luck. Hey guys, I'm Amy Watts. Um, you probably haven't seen me around church because I'm usually in the upstairs room pressing the computer buttons for a big church for all the lights and the video and stuff. But today, Mr. Corey and Mr. Andrew asked if I would show you how to make one of these. You can send them to hospitals, you can give them to nurses that you know, you can give them to grocery store workers, or you could just make one for your mom or your dad to wear when they go to the grocery store. So they're not real hard to make. If you can sew a straight line, you can make one. So all you need is a measuring tape or a ruler, a pen, a piece of fabric that's seven inches by 16 inches, some thread, some wire, and you can use pipe cleaners or bread twist ties. You need some string or elastic, a pair of scissors. You can do this with a needle and thread or you can use a sewing machine if you have one, and you'll need an iron. So the first thing you wanna have is a piece of fabric and you don't want stretchy fabric like a, um, a t-shirt you want more of like a bed sheet type fabric but ask your mom or dad before you start cutting up the bed sheets so here we've got a piece of fabric that's 16 inches by 7 inches okay so then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold it in half and you're gonna sew along the edges I've got one here that I've already sewn and you're gonna make a pocket with a gap in it. And that gap is there so that you can turn it right side out, just like you turn your shirt right side out after you take it off. So we're just gonna pull this through. And if you need help getting the corners out, you can use a pen or a pair of scissors and you can stick that in through that little hole and poke the, the corners out until you have your rectangle. Like that. Then you're going to want to iron it. So we've got one right here 
This one's all nice and flat now. We've ironed it and it still has that little hole in it and that's okay, that's a good thing. Because now we want to put the nose piece in it. The piece of wire that makes it fit around the nose because you don't want gaps around the face. That's how germs get in. So you can use twist ties from your bread wrappers and I think it's best to use two because they're stronger that way and so you can just twist them together. So I've got one of those here. The other thing is if you have some twist or uh, pipe cleaners around your house you can just fold that in half and you can do the same thing where you twist them up. And once you've done that you're going to use that little hole that you still have and you're going to put that in along the long side. I'm just going to poke that in there. And you can see it's kind of right in here like this. That makes a stiff part for the nose. And then we're going to sew around that by hand or on your sewing machine. And it ends up looking like this. So you can see where I've sewn around it. And you can see where it will actually bend to fit around the nose. Now we have to get these folds. And what that does is it makes it so that the mask will go from the top of the nose down below the chin. So now we're gonna put the folds in it with an iron. And basically, if you just do the width of a pen maybe, or a pencil, you're just gonna go back and forth, kind of like when you do a fan. If you've ever made a fan out of paper, and then you'll iron it. And it ends up looking like this. And you can use chip clips or binder clips to hold the edges. And now the last thing we need is we need these elastic or ties. Now, if you have elastic, that's great, but it's actually hard to make them adjustable with the elastic because these this is really stretchy and some elastic like this elastic that I have, it's actually not that stretchy. So it was really hard to make it adjustable. So I found it was actually better to use string because then whoever's wearing it can just tie it however they need to, to go behind their ears. So then all you do is you're gonna sew along the edge so that you don't lose your folds. Again, we've got three there. So you're gonna sew along the edge and sew in your string. And that's probably about 27 inches of string. One way that you can measure it is just from your nose out to the end of your arm, although your arm is probably shorter than my arm. Um, or you can just do like this. Enough so that you can get it behind the ear and have plenty of ways to tie it. Some people like to tie them behind their head. So that's how you make a mask. And you'll wanna wash them and put them in a Ziploc bag to keep them clean. And you can give them to any nurses that you know or send them to a hospital. You can make one for your mom or dad for them to wear to the grocery store. You can give them to the grocery store workers. But if you wanna know where to send them, I found this website. It's www.deaconess.com masks. And it has instructions on how to make these exact masks and also where uh, some different places are all around the country that are asking for these masks for you to send to them. So I hope that um, you'll have a good time making the masks and stay safe.